What up, what up, and here the movie brother, what's good? Hey, today I'm introducing um, a gentleman by the name of Matt Birkbeck. Uh, Matt is a very accomplished investigative journalist as well as author, and he wrote a book in 2008 called Deconstructing Sammy that really digs into the life of the late, great Sammy Davis Jr. But that's just one piece of it. There's a lot more going on that I don't wanna give it away. Um, one thing that really stood out for me uh, in this book that made me want to interview Matt was that it reads like a screenplay. And I mean, I'm a film critic, so I'm biased, right? I love film. So to read a book that, you know, reads like a film, I mean, that's the best of both worlds. So I hope you enjoy um, the conversation that he and I had as much as I did. Uh, Matt's doing a lot of great things. So stay tuned in 2021. That's what it is. I'm Ant, the movie brother. This is the place, the one and only place where I bring you nothing but the real on the real. Peace. Man, let's let's uh, let's get into this thing and um, talk about deconstructing Sammy. So, you know, for those that don't know, I mean, how did this project even come about? So I knew um, the story is about. It's really it's not it's not a bio on Sammy Davis Jr. It tells the story of Sammy, but it tells the story through an investigation, and it was an investigation that was conducted in the 1990s into the early 2000s by a fellow by the name of Albert Sonny Murray, and he's a former United States attorney in Pennsylvania. And his family, his parents had uh, been, they were the proprietors of what had been the first black owned resort in the Poconos in Eastern Pennsylvania since like the 1950s. Um, they've got this amazing history. And so Sonny and I used to have breakfast. You know, I, I had known him from my days as a newspaper reporter. And he told me once that he had represented the Sammy Davis Jr. estate. And, you know, he filled me in on a couple of things, but he said to me once, he said, you know, Sammy knows the story of the Kennedy assassination. And I was, you know, I was floored. I said, well, how does Sammy Davis Jr. know that? And he couldn't tell me, he said. Uh, but I was intrigued. So I did my first book in 2002. I did my second book, A Beautiful Child, in 2004. And I finally convinced Sonny to tell me his story. And it took me, I mean, that's how, and that's how I got into it. And from 2000, I'd say late 2004, 2000, actually, no, it was a little bit later than that. It was probably around 06 um, that I really started diving into it. And uh, it, was an, it was an incredible story um, in which you basically tell the story of Sammy Davis Jr. Is, and how he ended up dying $15 million in debt owed half of that to the IRS, and because of that debt, and they owned his name and his likeness, you never heard about Sammy again following his death in 1990. Title, Deconstructing Sammy. Uh, now, I know you've written this some, you know, some time ago, but, uh, you know, any particular reason why, you know, why you chose or you guys chose that title? So I, you know, one of the things that's important to me in telling a story is that uh, it has, there has to be multiple facets to it. Um, it has to be complex. It has to be obviously of interest to me. I also need to come up with a pretty good title, something that's really representative of the book. And to me, deconstructing Sammy was perfect because that's exactly what Sonny did. So Sonny, so, uh, Sammy's wife, Altavis, who he'd been married to for the last 20 years or so of his life, uh, it was his third wife. She actually, the reason why Sonny knew her is because she ended up following Sammy's death living in poverty on the grounds of the Hillside Inn, which was the resort owned by Sonny's parents. And she was living with an old family friend and she was broke, she was an alcoholic. And the old family friend asked Sonny if he could represent her and try to get her out of this mess that Sammy had left her in with all these debts. In order to do that, Sonny had to basically understand Sonny, Sammy's life. Like, how did Sammy get into such um, debt and despair? Yeah. And so basically, he had to deconstruct his life. And so I thought to myself, that's a perfect title, Deconstructing Sammy. We, we know that, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, Mr. Davis died uh, in debt, in a significant amount of debt. Um, and so I want to spend some time talking about, you know, his, his financial situation and, you know, get your thoughts on this. So do, do you think Sammy Davis Jr. was fiscally irresponsible or, you know, was he a generous person who just loved life? And 
you know, it was just literally, maybe it was just one of his, his love languages to give the way that he gave throughout his life. Uh, I think it's a, it's probably a combination of both. You know, you're talking about a man that made millions during the course of his life. Uh, you know, he played in Las Vegas and he get paid, you know, 250 grand uh, to perform. So yes, he spent money uh, like water. Uh, but he also thought at the same time, he had trusted certain individuals that he shouldn't have trusted, which is basically a familiar story with many people in Hollywood. Uh, you know, you trust certain people, you think that you're putting your money into something relatively safe, and then you find out and it's all gone. And for, for Sammy, while he did spend wildly, and that's, that's well known, uh, what wasn't well known when I discovered in doing this book, you know, Sonny had basically laid the trail for me in terms of what he did. Um, you know, but it was up to me to basically like, connect a lot of these dots and to go further and to, you know, I saw, I saw all these mob connections, you know, going back to the 1950s. So when he first met Frank Sinatra, it was Frank Sinatra that, that introduced him to his first attorney, Sammy's first attorney, and he was a mob guy. And you follow this trail and how and the mobs hold on the entertainment industry and 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 to the, to, to Sammy to the day Sammy died he was still beholden to them and that's how he ended up basically falling into such debt in that he made investments um, that were shown to him by you know certain individuals uh, that were I mean on the on the surface they were just ridiculous scams like at a, right. one I describe in the book where. He's investing, he's buying shares in a Kentucky coal company in which they were going to take coal and put it in 10 pound bags and sell it across the country. Nobody buys lumps of coal like that, <laughs> which was which ridiculous. Right. But what happened was these mob guys, they were using, what their real intent was, was to use Sammy's name to entice investors sure. into these sure. bogus deals. And then they would just scam everybody. So unfortunately for Sammy, he had used, um, them as tax shelters and the IRS um, denied them. That's what left them in debt. But it was a combination of someone who just enjoyed life, sure. enjoyed everything that life had to offer and then some, um, you know, but also just being in bed with some really bad people. Yeah. 